What is up, producers? It took me almost 10 years in Ableton to figure out a bunch of little tricks that changed everything for my music, and nobody ever told me them in any tutorial. Your tracks are probably almost there. They sound cool, but they don't feel pro yet, and you spend way too much time clicking around. In this video, I'm gonna give you 10 Ableton tricks that took me a decade to learn, and you can steal them in the next few minutes. If you're new here, my name is Bo, I go by Low End Candy. I make bass music and I teach people how to actually use Ableton without wanting to throw their laptop. If you get value from this, drop a like and a comment with which trick was your favorite. It really does help the channel and it tells me what to go deeper on next. All right, let's jump in. The first thing I want you to start doing is using Command plus F in the browser like a power user. Instead of digging through folders, scrolling through drums, samples, user library, all that, just hit Command plus F and type what you're looking for. Kick, OTT, Serum, whatever. Ableton will search everything. Devices, samples, presets, user folders. And if you set that little column to rank, over time the sounds you actually use the most float to the top. So the workflow becomes don't scroll, don't hunt. Hit Command plus F, type, press Enter, drag. You save yourself five or 10 seconds every single time you reach for a sound, and that adds up over an entire track. The next thing is using Ableton's similar feature on drums and simplers so you can get instant variations without digging forever. Most people know you can click that little similar icon on an audio clip and find related samples. That's fine, but the real cheat code is on drum racks and simplers. Let's say you've got a kick on a pad that's close but not quite right. Click the pad and on Mac, hit Command plus right arrow. Ableton swaps that kick for the next closest kick in your library. Command plus left goes back. You can literally flick through cousins of that sound without ever leaving the rack. You can do this on the whole rack too. So one shortcut and you've got the same groove with a whole new kit. Same idea with a simpler. Load a sample, play a part, and then just tap command plus right to scroll through similar samples while the timing and processing stay the same. Instead of auditioning 200 snares manually, you just keep the vibe and flip through options. Now let's talk about resampling and committing to sounds because this will speed you up a ton. We all freeze and flatten tracks to print serum or big effects chains to audio. The annoying way is right click, freeze, wait, right click, flatten. In Live 12, you can just use freeze and flatten together and you can map that to a shortcut. I like something like shift plus command plus F. Once you've done that, your workflow is simple. You're happy with the sound, you select the track, hit your shortcut, and boom, you've got audio. No menu diving. That forces you to commit earlier, it saves CPU, and now you're editing straight audio instead of babysitting a bunch of heavy instruments. Another tiny thing that makes you feel like a ninja is using the tools as hold keys. Instead of clicking the automation button or changing tools permanently, you just dip into them. If you hold A, automation lanes pop up while you're holding it. Draw what you need, let go, and you're back to normal. If you hold B, you temporarily get the pencil tool so you can just scribble in notes or automation, then release it, and you're back to the arrow. Hold Z to zoom into a selection, let go to zoom back out. Once that's in your muscle memory, you stop going up to menus and clicking tiny icons, and you stay in flow, just popping in and out of whatever you need for a second. Let's fix how your drums are set up because this alone can make your mix sound way more professional. Take your main drum tracks, kick, snare, hats, perks. Select them and group them, Command G. Name that group drums in all caps. Give it a loud color so you can't miss it. Now, instead of over-processing every single drum on its own, treat the group like one instrument. Put a glue compressor on it, a saturator, maybe a clipper or a tiny bit of EQ. You only need a couple decibels of gain reduction on the glue, a little bit of saturation to thicken it up. Now your drums react together. When the track gets louder, the whole kit breathes as one unit and you have one fader that controls your entire drum balance. Next, I want you to start using clip gain before you reach for another plugin. 
When something's too loud or too quiet, a vocal phrase, a bass shot, whatever, don't immediately grab a compressor or a limiter. Click the audio clip and look at the gain control in the clip view. That's your first stop. Turn that up or down until the raw level makes sense. If you go too far or you're auditioning levels and you hate it, just hit backspace on that value and it snaps back to zero. This keeps your gain staging under control. If every plugin in your chain is adding three decibels, by the time you hit the master, you're clipping. If the clip's gain is right, your plugins don't have to work as hard and your mix breathes. Now let's talk warp modes, because this is where a lot of people accidentally trash their drums. Ableton gives you a bunch of warp algorithms and most people just leave it on the default and hope it sounds okay. Simple rule. If it's a full harmonic thing, like a vocal, a pad, a full song, Complex or Complex Pro usually does the job. If it's drums, especially tight one shots and loops, put it in beats mode. In beats mode, look for that little drop down and set it to transient with the envelope at 100. That way Ableton is basically jumping between hits instead of stretching the whole loop like rubber. And if you want that old school tape or record pitch thing where speeding it up raises the pitch, switch to repitch. To get your drums feeling human instead of like a robot tapping a grid, use the groove pool. Open the groove pool, drag in some grooves, the MPC swings, SP1200 grooves, whatever feels good, and drop one on your hi-hat MIDI clip. Now your 16th note hats aren't perfectly on grid. The timing and velocity move a little. You can push the timing and velocity amounts in the groove settings to exaggerate it, or extract groove from a drum break you love and apply that to your own drums. Instantly, your hats and perks feel more like a drummer and less like, I just painted a 16th note line and walked away. On top of that, Ableton's chance and randomization stuff is crazy powerful for keeping loops from getting stale. If you've got multiple MIDI clips that are variations of the same thing, like four different hi-hat patterns or four bassline variations, group those clips. Once they're grouped, you can tell Ableton to pick one from the group each time, and you can set chance values so it doesn't always pick the same one. Inside the MIDI editor, you can also give individual notes a chance percentage, so maybe a ghost snare only hits some of the time. The result is a loop that's familiar, but it never plays exactly the same way twice. That's perfect for long intros, breakdowns, or just keeping a four bar loop evolving without you drawing automation for 64 bars. Last big thing is file management, which is boring, but it will save your life. Every time you start a new song, save it as its own project folder. Don't just keep piling new sets into some random Ableton Projects junk drawer. When you're ready to send it to someone, or you know you want to back it up, go to File, Collect All, and Save, and check the boxes so Ableton copies every sample into that project's samples folder. That way, if you move your sample packs or switch computers, the project still opens with all the sounds intact. No more media files are missing nightmares. Take it one step further and build a template you love. Open a blank set and set it up with a drum bus, your sidechain routing, your favorite returns, maybe a bass MIDI track ready to go, your AI Ableton chord device loaded on a MIDI track, color coding the way you like it. Then save that as your default set. From then on, every time you open Ableton, you're dropping ideas into a system that's already dialed in instead of starting from a completely blank slate. All right, that's 10 Ableton Live tricks that genuinely took me years to figure out the hard way. If you made it this far, you're already ahead of where I was at your stage. Let me know in the comments which one you're going to start using today, and if you've got a sneaky little trick of your own, drop that too so we can all steal it. If you want to go deeper, I've got free stuff, samples, and my AI Ableton devices linked at the top of the description, so go grab those and keep leveling up.